Could you tell me more about the insect species you're studying in Antarctica? What are you trying to find out about it? Even though Antarctica is so huge, there is only really one insect that's native to like the continent itself and not also found on some of the other islands. Uh, and it's a tiny little fly with no wings, so it can't even fly, uh, called Belgica Antarctica. Well, they're only about maybe a millimeter thick and half a centimeter long when they're at maximum size. And that's the larva. Uh, the adults are even tinier. Nonetheless, they are technically the largest terrestrial animal in Antarctica because they can't swim, unlike the penguin. Now, so one thing I'm here to do is to try to figure out a little bit more about how it's able to survive the cold. My hypothesis is that it might have some relationship with ice nucleating bacteria. Now, those are bacteria which will affect the freezing point of water. Uh, we actually use one of these bacteria to make artificial snow. You mix the bacteria with water and the water will freeze at a relatively warm temperature. Uh, so I've been down here looking for these little larvae, dissecting them, plating the gut microbes, growing the microbes, and seeing can any of them nucleate ice. What is the broader significance of this type of research in Antarctica? And what do you plan to bring back from this trip? These ice nucleating microbes could be used to control insects in colder temperatures. If you expose insects to these bacteria, they will freeze at a higher temperature. So if you have something that lives um, in the relatively cold climate and you want it to die, you make it freeze a little bit sooner. Or you could use this on food or rice or whatever that you're storing at a cold temperature. Add ice nucleating bacteria and things will freeze sooner. I am planning to bring back some of the microbe samples and hopefully describe them, learn more about them, name them if they are a new species. Who knows? We, we don't know what we might find. Um, I'll bring back DNA samples just so we can get a full picture of the microbiome. What about Antarctica makes it so important for scientific research? There's a lot about Antarctica that's really important. Um, you know, a lot of our research on climate change comes here, uh, and Antarctica is experiencing climate change a lot more strongly than other parts of the world. So I think the global climate average has risen by like 1.5 degrees Celsius, which is already bad. Uh, here in the peninsula, it's gone up by about 4 degrees Celsius in the same amount of time. Uh, so the global average actually means it's a lot higher here in the poles. And it's had a really serious effect on life here. Consider the base that I'm in. They've, you know, humans have been on this base for decades, and they can see major changes. Um, penguins are one example. The island where I'm on now used to have very few penguins. Um, then it had a bunch of Adelie penguins, which like relatively cold climates. And right now there's about 6,000 Gentoo penguins um, on this little island. They're really cute, but they don't they shouldn't be here. This is supposed to be too cold for the Gentoo penguin. They're not supposed to get this far south, and yet they are everywhere. Um, so Antarctica is a really good example of climate change in action. 